Greetings programs, Neo Mega Man back again for episode 11 of Let's Play Katawa Shoujo. Yeah, you can probably guess that I've figured out and thus fixed the uh, intro glitch that plagued the other first 10 episodes aside from the first one. But, I've got it figured out. We're good now. And I think we're ready to move on. The first thing I do this morning is trip once again over Kenji's package as I get out of bed, finding myself diving headfirst into the floor before I'm even fully awake. I'm going to smack this thing with the first blunt object I can find, like I'm going for a home run, but I don't even have the energy for that this early in the morning, and it likely wouldn't damage ins whatever's inside, or no, it would likely damage whatever's inside, and that would be mean. I slide it into the hallway. It sails along the smooth floor with little difficulty and stops with a soft and almost inaudible bump on colliding with Kenji's door. Immediately, a dozen locks on bolts in succession like a mounting symphony. Oh god, Kenji, go away. Who is it? He says as he blindly steps forward in the hallway anyway, somehow stepping over the box in a way that would be almost, or that would be uncharacteristically graceful. Or no. Uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically, impressively graceful, if it weren't for the fact that I knew it was wholly accidental. It's me. I got your mail. You're standing over it. I know. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, whatever. So what's in it? He cringes, instantly turning, instantly turning very defensive and agitated. It's nothing. Come on, tell me. I'm curious. And you know, I almost broke my neck falling over it. Before that, I had to carry the stupidly large box around with it blocking my vision, crossing rows with it in front of me. I think you can at least tell me what's inside in return. It's secret stuff. I can't tell you because then it wouldn't be very secret and shit. It's nothing important. Well, if it's nothing important, then you can tell me. If it's nothing important, why do you have to know? Why is that wrong? Why do you have to know? Why can't I know? Why are you answering my, why are you answering my questions with questions? Why won't you answer my first question? Why won't you answer? My, why won't you answer my last question? When I realize our voices are getting higher and higher with each reply. Down the hall, a door pops open, and someone sticks his head out quizzically to see what's going on. We must look like such tools, but I bet I'm the one, only one out of the two of us with enough shame to realize it. Fine, you could take it to your grave. I have to get ready for school anyway. Damn, no. Why are you so hasty to leave? Stick around a little. You want some coffee? It's been a while. You know, I thought you were dead since you were so slow with the package delivery. You're lucky I was willing to do package delivery in the first place, smartass. Well, calm down. Man, you're so confrontational. Is it because of the student council thing? I hear you hang out with them now. You heard it from me when I told you. Really? Yeah, well, whatever, man. The point is they're terrible. You're the new guy, so of course you wouldn't know, but around here, she's a very divisive figure. Before you came here, she tried to institute a badge policy. It's a long story, so maybe you should sit down. I look around for a chair, but I can't find one, as we're in a goddamn hallway. I raise a finger and start thinking about maybe I should tell him that, but I think he's already started talking. Not wanting to waste the arm movement, I look at my watch instead. It would have been a real reign of terror if it had happened. Wait, you're judging her based on something that didn't even happen? Yes. Anyway, her idea was like merit badges, but there would also be demerit badges. What would those do? I don't know, it never happened. It seemed bad, though. So when I heard about it, I didn't leave my room for a few weeks. So you heard there would be a massive change and hid in your room, just trying to ride the change out. Nah, I decided to do something about it. I found the student council office after a while and marched right in with a list of demands and a bunch of people I grabbed in order to make myself look like I had supporters. Wait, so not only did it not happen, but no one even cared? Kenji doesn't hear me, having gotten a good momentum going. Wrapped up in the energy of his own ranting, he starts to completely flip out and flail his arms, appearing to, appearing to wildly throw gang signs. I walked up to the desk and said to her, Hey, you fascist woman, what is this badge idea? How out of touch can you be here in your ivory tower, smugly looking down upon us like we're just a bunch of idiots? Who do you think you are? Your level of elitism is terrible. You're probably one of those outrageous rich people who have chauffeurs drive them around slums so they can point and laugh. 
and only drink pricey coffee beans shat out by the last living dinosaur and brewed in a solid gold skull. And how could you? Go open up a history book. Don't you know it's... Don't you know that the bourgeoisie are always overthrown in a bloody revolution for shit like this? Stupid, you're an idiot! Sure, the revolutionaries end up turning everything into another clusterfuck later on, but a maniac is the only kind of person who would create a policy like this. It's like something I would create to make people suffer, only real, and you want to institutionalize it. Where will this desecration of our rights end? We are people! This is not justice! That's what I said. Then I added a cry of, they could take our things, but they'll never take our freedom! To appeal to the masses like in that movie about the life of William Wallace where they took his things and brought his freedom and then they killed him. But she just ignored me and didn't even look up from writing in her little paper shit. Maybe I overwhelmed her with my logic so badly that she just retreated into denial. Maybe she's just an asshole. Either way, she didn't reply and the future refused to change. To top it off, on the way back I realized I'd lost my student ID somewhere. This is the story of my life. A constant and seemingly futile struggle. Like trying to climb up a brick wall with sponges for hands. Hey, you said nothing changed, but she didn't make everyone wear a bunch of stupid badges. So, it did change. Yeah, that's true. Okay, maybe they're not so bad then. I guess that counts for something. If I can get Kenji to admit that maybe two women may not be so bad after all, I'll take it. Especially if it allows me to slip out of this conversation. I didn't realize how much time had gone by. I try to run through my usual morning routine as quickly as possible. I check my watch again as I leave the dorms and see that I'm already late. Well, fuck a doodle do. Fortunately, the rest of the day goes more smoothly, and after classes are over, I head to meet with Shizune again. Behind the school, I catch her leaning against a completed stand with parts of it still flecked with bits of paper and tape, remnants from signs of the last time it was used. Absentmindedly spinning a nail in her hand, she hasn't noticed me yet. The temptation to sneak up on her is unbearable. Years of watching foreign wildlife documentaries have prepared me for this. I'm downwind. Conditions are favorable. However, the more I think about it, the more it seems like a bad idea. If I get caught halfway, I'll look like an idiot. And if she doesn't know it's me, it could end up with an injury. Either way, it'll also look a little insensitive, so it would probably be best not to try anything funny, as disappointing as it is. I walk in front of her, startle startling her a little. Why so surprised? Did I catch you slacking off? No, I was taking a break. You don't look like you even broke a sweat. That's some break there, President. Just in his eyes dart back and forth momentarily, and I think I've managed to fluster her. There's an exasperation on her face and a little tension as well, but she can't back down. That would be unthinkable for her. Her fingers dance across each other impatiently. You're acting competitive today. Are you trying to get my blood boiling? Do you want to make it a contest? We'll race to see who can construct the most stalls by sundown. No, no, I'm teasing you. Gosh, that's okay. It's not a real student council if you can't tease the student council president a little. You agree, don't you? That isn't in the student council charter, so it isn't true. There is no charter. At least I don't think there is. The only thing they pledge loyalty to are a stack of takeout menus. <laughs> anyway, it's good that you're finally here, even if you could have been here earlier. Pick up a hammer and we'll resume where we left off. As we work assembling stalls again, I slowly realize that it's really much less work than I would have expected. In fact, according to Shizune, we should be done by the end of the day with a little luck. The last time I did something like this for them, it took her, Misha, and myself almost four days to do it. It can't be just my imagination. You know, this doesn't seem like that much work. Because it isn't. That answer leaves me wanting a little more. Knowing that it isn't the best, Shizune puts down her hammer to elaborate. It would be impossible for two people to do that much work in less than a week. The truth is that I don't dismantle half the stalls, I just store them someplace else. Actually, more like I hide them in plain sight. She waggles a finger mischievously. But that's a secret, and it's not proper to reveal the tricks of the trade. You're not a magician. Winking, she takes out two plastic containers from her bag, then puts them down on the nearby board before raising her hand slightly as if to say, Ta-da! I made lunch today for both of us. You can have this one. The food shifted in my bag, and now some of it is mixed together. She hands me one of the containers. I open it. It looks delicious, if a little simple. She hands me a pair of chopsticks, as if she had just remembered to, and I eat what I then I eat what looks like some grilled beef. It's very tasty. You don't like your food touching other food? I do not. You're really picky. I hate people like that. 
Sometimes I mix my food on my own, but not always, and not everything. I don't like it when it's done for me. What's important is the choice. At least that part I can respect. She points decisively to emphasize it, and then breaks her chopsticks apart to eat her own meal. As I continue to eat, I notice two things. The first is that almost everything I'm eating besides the rice is fried. The vegetables are fried. And there's so much meat! Does she eat this kind of stuff all the time? I wonder how she manages to stay so thin in spite of it. The second thing I notice is that I can't talk to her while eating. Talking with your mouth full is a little rude anyway, but with our hands holding chopsticks and bowls, communication between us is impossible, just like yesterday. Even though we're spending time together, even though I took the time to learn sign language, it feels like I'm talking to her less. And despite that, it also feels like I'm understanding her more. Guess who? I hear the sound of something tapping against one of the stands and look up to see Lily standing off to my side, feeling her way around with her cane. Hi! I narrowly catch myself before I say, didn't see you there. Oh, Hisao, is that you? I thought I smelled something delicious cooking and wondered who it might be. What is she saying? It's hard to move my hands and parallel to saying something completely different to Lily. This has to be why Misha just signs everything all the time. A bit sillier, but it seems like it would simplify, simplify things a lot. She suddenly tense her fingers delightedly at my translation as if hearing a joke. All this food was cooked hours ago, but for someone as slow as yourself, who can't even turn in a piece of paper without being a week late, I guess your perception of time would have to be a little different. That's not very nice. A frown crosses Lily's face in response to, to a reply to something she didn't hear. Ah, sorry. I'm just having a late lunch here. The student council president... Oh, that's... that's he's out. The student council president cooked everything. Is the student council president here right now? She's right here. I apologize, I didn't notice. Normally her level of presence is much higher. I was not aware that the student council serves lunch outdoors. Why wasn't I invited? I think that it's good to have enough free time to be able to do things like this, however. What is she saying? If I were to invite you anywhere, you would just show up late. But Shizune's words are outside of Lily's perception, a fact that is by the second increasingly maddening to her. Translate for me completely, please. What polite phrasing. It's a shame she's essentially making me, asking me to let her fully release the dogs of war. Still, I can't just do nothing. The feeling of being unable to even respond and it being and be understood is so isolating she'd never forgive me. I'll just try to soften her words a little. Actually, this was all cooked a while ago. Really? That's nice. Turn over here. It's disrespectful not to look at the person you're speaking to. That isn't the prim and proper way a lady should conduct herself. Half of what I'm saying is really what Shizune is saying. She doesn't like it when people don't look in her direction when she's trying to make a point. She's, uh, to the right of my voice. Although in this case, I can understand why Lily wouldn't. This is a very awkward situation, and it's daunting being the sole conduit for dialogue between the two of them. Truthfully, I had forgotten what happened the last time they butted heads like this. It's clear Shizune remembers, and Lily is being pretty hostile herself in her own way. I'm sorry, such formalities slipped my mind completely. I forgot that the student council president is the type of person who would demand such respect and adherence to the rules at all times. I suppose student government requires you to keep a tight ship. Then again, she certainly has time for her own fun as well, so that must not be completely true. Student council is not a dictatorship, nor a zero-sum game. Shizune points at Lily with her finger out like the barrel of a gun and snaps her fingers explosively causing her to flinch and become visibly upset. Is that so? Then that makes it more impressive that you have been a part of it for so long, playing it as though it were one. I admire the fact that you're so tenacious. To manage it all, you must be so responsible as well. Not as much as I'd like to be. You can't complain about yourself, though, can you? You're very responsible. Actions like requesting a deadline to be extended and then running all the way through to the next deadline is the very model of responsibility. Shizune is happy to hear that, but apparently you're pretty responsible yourself, she says. Does she really? More or less. Lily doesn't seem very happy. We're not holding a cookout. We're just taking a little lunch break. We're actually out here building stalls for the festival. You wouldn't know, since you never go outside. Did you run out of tea? You going into town? Shopping? No, as I said before, I was just passing by, in case you didn't hear. But, ooh. Hello? 
I would hate to interrupt the student council president. You're not doing anything now, but you must both be very busy. In any case, Hisa, I'm sure that the student council president will be able to find or make work for the both of you if she needs to. I'll devour you! Yeah, very busy. Devour is a hard word. I'm pleased that I can read it. This isn't a time to celebrate, though. Not over that. Instead, it looks like they might stop squabbling. I'd drink to that. Have a nice day, Hiso. Goodbye, Student Council President. Thanks. You too. Stay classy. As soon as Lily leaves, Shizune dives into the remains of her lunch as quickly as possible, as if, e as if each bite she shovels away is a means of forgetting any of this ever happened. When she's done, she heads right back to hammering with the same mindset. It's good that she's working off her frustration, but now it doesn't look like she's in any mood to talk anymore. About two hours later, she stops, having mowed through the rest of the stalls non-stop in that time. It still feels hard to approach her, and I think about how easily a conversation can die. After it took so long to be able to get her alone and speak to her directly, it almost hurts. Your translation was good. Really? First class. She punctuates it with a thumbs up. For your level. There aren't many deaf people in the school, and sign language classes have been on the edge of getting cut for a while now. I'm sure you don't have many classmates, am I right? If you're only learning sign language now, then your speed is going to be limited. That's why I interest in it wanes, because it takes more effort than normal just to communicate. I imagine it's the same with all languages. <clears throat> in such a situation, conversations in sign language are less something than they would be inherently be to start with. I don't understand that word. Less what? Spontaneous. As if proving her point. Misha is the only person who can really capture it. Yeah, that's definitely true. Her expression changes for a second, and changes back too quickly to digest. I'm so fast I didn't even see it. But I get the feeling this isn't meant to be pursued. What I really want to know about is... Why do you and Lily fight so much? Tensing a little, invisibly frowning, Shizune tenses her fingers and overlays them repeatedly as if shuffling an invisible deck of cards. Two fights that you know of aren't worth calling so much. If you'd been there last year, you could say that. I heard it was a rough year. Something about how you tried to institute a badge policy? <laughs> Surprised? Well, I want to hear more about that later, definitely, but you don't like very li Lily very much, do you? Don't dodge my question, either. I'm not dodging anything. She was part of the student council until last year. We didn't get along very well. She wanted to keep doing things like the old student council did. The old student council was just so ineffectual. It was stupid and insulting. <clears throat> I wanted to do more, and we had a fight. A lot of fights. She couldn't do anything on time. Then she said that what I wanted to do was meaningless, just extra busy work. Does this look like meaningless busy work to you? Shizune gestures around us. What's really meaningless is a student council that doesn't do anything. Weak, lazy, and boring. Especially boring. <clears throat> I couldn't get excited over sitting in a room with nothing to do. That's just a waste of time. Why would I even be there? It didn't get the blood flowing. Arguing with her does that. If she could have been that motivated before, she wouldn't have to put so much dedication to being my enemy. But if she shows that much, much spirit, it's not a complete loss. At least it's something. I'm, it's still exciting. I see. What about the badge thing? She laughs, covering her mouth as if to, with her hand as if to hide it. Her laughter is the only thing she regularly tries to hide. That was just a joke. Having a little fun sometimes is important, too. Oh, next day. Kind of burning through the days at this rate, huh? The next day, I end up having to hunt around a bit at the start of lunch when I find that my usual vending machine near the dormitory buildings is sold out of my usual favorite canned coffee. The detour takes longer than I expected. Things have been so hectic lately that it takes some time for me to register why something smells different as I walk through the school gardens back to the cafeteria. The grass has been freshly mowed. The realization makes me pause and watch for a bit. The odd group of students chatting or playing around on the grass and a couple of teachers conversing on the path ahead makes for a very idyllic scene. 
Unfortunately, a feeling of imminent dread starts creeping up on me after a while. That feeling that I'm not alone. Ah, God damn it, Kenji. Hey, Hisao, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I guess I should be happy it's him and not, say, a slasher. Or a snatcher. Kenji begins talking as if he's having a conversation with someone other than me. Knew it. That haircut's unmistakable. No normal person would have a haircut like that. Unconsciously, I start touching the back of my head. Once I realize what I'm doing, I feel insulted, yet too surprised to get, even get indignant about it. Yeah, what are you doing here? Measuring the temperature. Winter will come soon. It'll be too cold for women to go out and have their sex in the city-style power lunches, followed by obstructive human wave formation walks in crowded urban areas. He's actually seen sex in the city, apparently. When this happens, man will be able to walk the streets unfettered once again, and reclaim what is his heritage. In order, to, in order to prepare for that day, I've been eating nothing but pizzas for the past week to store energy. Okay. That's what bears do. So, there's much we can learn from the bear. Kenji nods emphatically, agree, agreeing with himself. Okay, so check this shit out. I was in town today buying milk. They had a new clerk, some hipster girl with a baseball cap and two hockey sticks on it. I'll call her hipster hockey baseball hat girl. I noticed the milk didn't have a price tag, so I told her to get over there and label that milk for future generations. He was in town today? He must have cut morning classes. I want to scold him, but his verbal torrent prevents me from getting a word in edgewise. She told me not to bother her because she was sick. Sick? Sick? We live in a society here. You can't just opt out of human interaction because you're sick. You know how much effort it takes for me to even get up in the morning? I still do, though. I got up that morning to go down there and buy milk, not to have my vital questions just brushed aside by some hipster doofus college girl who wears a hockey baseball cap to work indoors. Anyway, I was just trying to uphold the integrity of her products. A milk carton without a price tag? When I see something like that, it just leads to questions. Important questions. And it's her job to answer them, damn it. That's the problem with women. They have no sense of duty. I get diarrhea a lot, but you don't see me complaining about it. I soldier on and do what I have to do anyway, because that's what being a man is all about. Even if you have diarrhea, you keep going for the dream of a better tomorrow. You know, frequent diarrhea is bad. Maybe you should stop drinking so much milk. I can't do that. It's what allows me to maintain my awesome strength. And in this world, a man's strength is the only thing that can't be browbeaten out of him by an increasingly pussy-whipped society. That's why I walk around leaving open jars of olives everywhere. Sometimes just to show that I can. Do you refrigerate after opening? What? Man, I don't know. That's not important. You have to refrigerate after opening. Even elementary school kids know that. They can't get the jar open in the first place, so it doesn't matter. That's true. I'm a genius. He self-assuredly rubs his chin, which is something I imagine scientists did until I met Muto and was tremendously let down. Anyway, I can't go to that store again since it's clearly been compromised by bitches. Unless I disguise myself. Maybe change to a different pair of glasses. Worst disguise ever. Pfft, it's been working flawlessly all these years. I don't even need glasses to see. They're for effect. Also to protect my identity. I'm like Superman. Worst disguise ever. I'm telling you, when people see my school ID, they can't even recognize me. Really? Let me see. Can't do that. Can't go around showing my ID to everyone. It was made long ago, at a different time. I had hippie hair. While I'm trying to imagine that, Kenji takes his glasses off. He. Oh, this is a new music track. Friendship. Really? I don't know if we hear this track anywhere else. I'll keep my ears open for it, though. Sorry, just enjoying the music there. <laughs> he squints as soon as they're off his face, which makes him look even more tired than he already does. He was right. He does look very different. Kind of like he hasn't slept in years. <clears throat> Not different enough for it to be a good disguise, though. You need more sleep. Those eyes. Nah. You look like you need it. No way. These are just the eyes of a man who has seen things. Shaman's eyes. Terrible things that you can't imagine. Like when I made a ship in a bottle and my mom sat on it. There was blood and shreds of floral print everywhere. That's what life experience is. 
Kenji doesn't seem very horrified, even though I think this is actually the first thing he's told me about himself that could be legit that could have been legitimately traumatic. He's also talking about 30 degrees to my left, so I guess his blindness is legit. I wave a hand in front of him anyway, to a little effect. Man, I hope you realize I'm just joking. I laugh, pretending that I did. Somehow looking him in the eyes is even more difficult than usual. Want some trivia? People with small eyes wear big glasses. I've read that somewhere. It's because it makes your eyes look less beady. Really? I didn't know that. He puts his glasses back on, and I feel oddly relieved for a moment until I remember that I still have to deal with him, glasses or not. I love that freaking record scratch. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. Well, anyway. Anyway. The art this artist girl wanted to paint my portrait once, I think. I had to talk to her like five times before she started making sense. Must have been Rin, I suppose. What'd she look like? I don't know. Woman with sandals. Definitely Rin. I was hoping he'd say something more specific, like she had no arms. Rin does wear sandals, but I feel like the chance of there being another free-spirited female art student wearing sandals besides her is reasonably high. I was thinking, sure, someday after I burn all documentation that I exist, it might be okay to leave a portrait behind, so that people can look at it and remember the savior of mankind. They'll need it to model the statue. Then I thought about it some more and had to turn it down. It was tempting, but she wanted it for some school thing. It'd be displayed. People would ask who I was, only I haven't saved society yet, so it'd be pointless. And then if someone recognized me, I'd have to explain myself. That's already a chain of events I don't want to deal with. I don't want to get mixed up in some weird situation. Shit like that always happens. Sticking out is a surefire way to get put on a list. That's why I make such a careful effort to blend in with people in my daily life until I can make them or until I can make my move. Sure. What list? There are many lists. So what are you doing here anyway? Nothing. I kinda got here by accident. It happens to me all the time. Well, hope that works out for you. I think I'm gonna go back to my dorm room. I need to set my TV to record my shows. You have TV? Yeah, you should come over sometime. We can watch the game in high definition. Yeah, right. He's got a high def TV in those tiny ass dorms. Before I can ask him what he's talking about, he's gone. He left like he came, with zero respect towards other people. Kind of amazing. Now that Kenji is gone, I resume looking aimlessly at the school gardens and their summer splendor. But it's no use. He ruined it for me. Bastard. When I get back to the cafeteria, exhausted but alive, I think of eating lunch with Shizune again, but find her sitting at a table with Misha already. If it were anyone else, I would think how they were too far away for me to hear them. This is Shizune and Misha, however. If I wanted to, I could eavesdrop on their conversation easily. What a dirty thing to think about, but it's there. I don't want to, though. I must have a lot of catching up to do, even if it's only been a few days. I'm inclined to just leave them alone so they can do that. However, the second they see me, they wave me over. Hi, Hee-chan! Hearing her voice again after such a short time apart is jarring, and I wince. These past few days, I've forgotten that communication with Shizune is almost entirely silent, and concentrating on getting it right, I had, turn I had tuned out even ambient noise. Well, I'll get used to it. Again. I'm glad she's back. I'm done making up all my work! Just in time! I wouldn't have to miss the festival after all! Wah! <laughs> if they really tried to enforce that, I'd pull you out on student council business. That's abuse of power! No, it isn't, He-Chan! She-Chan says that if there were only two student council members overseeing the festival, that'd be a problem, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. It has to be at least three. It's for the good of everyone. It's perfectly reasonable. It's necessary. Shizune leans across the table a bit as Misha delivers her slightly disturbing militaristic justifications in a childish, bubbly, up-and-down tone. Shizune looks so happy, though, tenting her fingers and trying to hold back a laugh as Misha pouts more seriously on her behalf. If you say so. I'm actually happy right now that we can talk so easily to each other. All three of us. In the beginning, I thought that I might have found myself in a bad situation. I was sure that Shizune would hate getting saddled with being a tour guide for the new guy. I didn't want to be that kind of burden, either. It'd be awkward, even if she weren't deaf and mute, too. Just now, she said that we would all have to be at the festival, the whole student council. I don't think that the student council has any real jurisdiction over Tanabata. It's only Shizune's way of saying that she wants us to spend it together. It's nice to have friends. 
It's a simple thought, but one that makes me genuinely happy. That we could slip into being such with so much ease. Despite the roundabout way in which she said it, I'm glad that Shizune thinks it strongly enough to express it at all. Why did you wait until you until we waved you over to come sit with us? A question out of nowhere. Shizune's eyes are expected as Misha repeats her message. Would you like teasing her? Do you want me to sit with you that badly? We're in the student council. We should sit together as much as possible. That's logic. Anyone would jump at the, sa the chance to sit with two cute girls anyway. She pauses in case I might say something like, You're not that cute! And instantly lock myself into an obvious no-win situation. When I don't take the bait, Shizune becomes more energetic and continues. You're abnormal. I didn't expect her to end it like that. You're too quick to call other people abnormal. It's so arrogant. You're too quick to call other people a arrogant. That makes you arrogant, and arrogance is also abnormal. You're double abnormal. It doesn't work that way. It's a sliding scale. <laughs> Leaning on her arm, Misha closes her eyes and lets out a low, slow laugh like a chuckle. Don't laugh! Don't laugh in this kind of situation. I notice that Misha signs everything I say to Shizune anyway, even though I'm signing myself. This is redundant, but it's an unconscious action for Misha. On the other hand, I can't stop. If I let myself take it easy and sign less just because Misha's back, then what was all that work for? If I, I don't want to risk losing familiarity without a sign, either. My hands are pretty slow to speak on my behalf as it is. Heechan, you and Shechan talk to each other so much more now. Back and forth, it's really funny, too. Like an old married couple, right? Right? What a loaded comment in so many ways. Although, because it's Misha, it can't have been on purpose, right? That's not a compliment. Shizune doesn't react to Misha trying to pair the two of us up. Maybe she didn't see it. Sometimes it does happen, I've noticed. I still wonder if it's really that simple and why I care so much, but I don't want to think about it too hard. I don't want to think too hard, it makes my head hurt. <laughs> I want to leave. I keep thinking that I'm hogging Misha's time with Shizune, and it could be that Misha cut in just now on purpose. I'm feeling that way too. I doubt that either of them will let me leave, though. In some ways, they're too nice. Anyway, Shizune, if you really want to know, I didn't want to sit here because I didn't want to intrude. I thought that because of Misha being away for supplementary lessons or whatever, you two would have a lot to talk about, and I should just leave you alone to catch up. That's why I thought I would just hang back. Don't worry, Misha, I'm not trying to monopolize Shizune. <laughs> Ichan, it's not like that. You're so considerate, Ichan. Shichan is sorry and apologizes. I don't really think it's worth apologizing over, so don't worry about it. Hey, don't you both think that since Misha's back we should go celebrate somehow? I think so. He chan usually having to make up work is something, isn't something to celebrate over. No, it's a good idea. The timing is perfect, and Shizune said the student council should have a little fun sometimes too, right? You probably heard that, right Misha? It should be fine. Actually, wait a second. Didn't you have to make up work because you were missing so many classes to begin with? So skipping out to celebrate would be kind of stupid. Maybe the timing isn't perfect, but like I said, we could go after school. Where should we go? Misha speaks Shizune's question to her aloud before she even stops to think it over, both of them completely ignoring me. Hey, listen to me, two-man short-sighted student council team. Wah! <laughs> Ichan, you're part of this team, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, yeah, you are, Heechan. So forgetful and troublesome. I feel sorry for the girl who falls in love with you. And, and. So, where do you think we should go? I'm laughing in spite of myself wanting to point out how Misha seems so enthusiastic now when she was the one who was most apprehensive about it just a few seconds before. For whatever reason, I can't bring myself to do it, but this is okay, too. After a short discussion on where to go, it seems like the only place all three of us know and are willing to travel to is, of course, the Shanghai. Tea House doesn't look like a bad place to celebrate, especially because I'm sure they sell cake there, and cake is the most celebratory food. And I think that's probably a good place to leave it for now. Okay, so no ton about it yet, but it is getting closer. So, part 12. Join me again for uh, some more LP of uh, Kitawa Shoujo. God, I can't think straight right now. Like I said, stay tuned for part 12 of uh, Let's Play Kitawa Shoujo. When hopefully either we get to Tanabata or at least get closer. Anyway, as for me, I'm your host, Neo Mega Man, signing out for now. End of line.